Hey guys, welcome to another fun pen mail day, and I actually have a bunch to show you here today. I've got one, two, three, four, five uh, different purchases that have all arrived uh, within about the same uh, week or so, and wanted to share with you uh, what those are. Um, this particular pen right here is a Labelle, L-I-B-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. um, Labelle was a brand that was owned by Kenro. Kenro uh, is a major distributor, especially here in North America, uh, for a lot of decent brands out there. Kenro currently owns the Esterbrook name, uh, if that tells you anything. Uh, when they re had that name revitalized and they bought out the uh, revitalized uh, um, Esterbrook name. So LaBelle is um, a brand that they had pioneered that came out in the early 2000s. Uh, so like 2003 through 2010, somewhere in there, uh, give or take a few years, but it was the early 2000s that they came out with the LaBelle brand. This particular model is the Vortex. And uh, it is something that I had uh, seen um, antiquedigger.com is where I originally had seen this particular pen and then I found um, and I kept watching and, and I found on his uh, eBay site uh, that he had actually this offered at a lower price uh, and so I eventually just went ahead and nibbled at it and said why not uh, for, the, for the price that I found it at alright uh, rather than getting the uh, the rollerball versions that he had for sale I was really holding out for a decent price <laughs> on uh, since it's an unknown to me as to how well they work I was holding out for a lower price that I could find sometime um, but uh, yeah I'd heard of LaBelle and uh, just had never really uh, wanted to jump at it until I actually saw them uh, on uh, Greg's website at Antique Digger so the, uh, the Vortex 3106 uh, Mocha Swirl is the pattern for this particular pen. It, this is nothing more than just a plain white box that it comes in uh, with a sticker there and a sticker there. That's all there is to it. So when you go to open it up, it actually comes with a uh, pen case that is Velcro uh, sealed. Um, and then you know the pen sat in here and in here was actually a converter and it did come with an ink cartridge inside the pen itself so not that I'm gonna particularly use this but I do have it um, and uh, one of the things I actually had a problem with the converter that was in this particular pen uh, it did not seat well it did not seat properly inside the pen and so what happened was I ended up getting ink everywhere because it just would not draw up ink properly and kept playing with it um, and I eventually just said let's just go ahead and, and pull out the converter and put a different one in fortunately be, being a collector I've got a bunch of converters so anyway uh, you look at it, it's got faceted where it's got like a triangular grip kind of thing here on the barrel uh, I like it because it's somewhat oversized and I've never been a huge fan of the idea of you know, a uh, metal cap on an acrylic body, but I figured, what the heck, let's go ahead and give it a shot. It has a pretty decent, big, uh, stiff clip to it, nice dome uh, for a finial, all, um, you know, nicely chrome-plated, um, and then it's got the LaBelle name that is engraved there on the cap, and there's really nothing engraved here at all, but you can see wh why they would call that a mocha swirl and on the bottom you got not a whole lot. Now one of the things about LaBelle, you're going to find that they, they're not in production anymore. Um, Kenro had contracted um, an Asian manufacturer to produce these particular pens uh, and they would turn around and sell them and uh, as their own brand which I don't have a problem with doing that. A lot of companies do that in particular uh, but you know it's it's not bad. It's a slip cap and it's a, it's a nice big chunky pen and that's one of the things I did like about it and one of the th reasons why I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. You've got a fairly short section here. One of the things about this particular pen too is yes it's a friction fit nib but the nib fits into a nice little uh, module that you can unscrew. I'm not going to do that because it is inked up but um, there is you can see right in here that there's actually an inner uh, cylinder there that actually screws in to the section. Like I said, it is a cartridge converter pen. 
So you've got a, an acrylic body with metal threads that meet on metal threads. So you definitely would not want to uh, uh, you definitely would not want to go ahead and eyedropper this particular pen. This converter is not the one that came with it. It is the one that I supplied as a replacement. And one of the things about it that made me, nah, I don't know, it's got an IPG or an Iridium Point Germany nib. I've brought this up many times before. IPG to me is, does it work? Is it going to work? Is it going to be horrible? Is it going to be good? So it's one of those things that it's hit or miss. Um, and fortunately this one actually did fairly well. And I'll show you that here in a writing sample in just a little bit. Another thing that I, I picked up is not something that I really thought I would get until I saw this at a fairly good price. From the 1960s or so, um, this is Waterman. Just because of the brand, I went ahead and picked this up. Advertised in the Saturday Evening Post, advertised in Life Magazine, Waterman. So it's the original box that it came with. Um, over 100 million people preferred Waterman's pen since 1884. Hmm. So, let's go ahead and open it up. Then you get a presentation box. Nothing fancy on the outside. You open it up, and you've got the original box that came in. Instructions for writing. Well, it tells you to press the colored cap halfway down until it clicks. Uh, to release, press all the way. Waterman's, the most luxurious ballpoint pen. So, this particular set came um, just as you see, and Deluxe. This sold for $25 in its day back in the 60s, uh, and advertised on Life Magazine. So, um, it's got two ballpoint pens, a tie clip, cufflinks, and a money clip all together here in one set. So, you know, just because of the nostalgia involved in it, not that I really wanted ballpoints. Uh, I have like zero affinity for most ballpoint pens, but just because it was a Waterman's, I decided to go ahead and get it. And uh, so you pull these out, and they do still work. You can tell it's, you know, it's got a little scuffing here. I haven't cleaned this up at all. I have tried to write with them, but click. So the clicking mechanism does still work. I can tell you they do not write. Um, these uh, so that part at least does still operate. So you got the black with gold, and then you got a red top on on one, and the black top on the other for your two ball points. So um, not that I ever wear shirts that require cufflinks <laughs> um, and I haven't had a pair of cufflinks uh, since I had a, a tie tack that I, or a tie clip that I purchased or was given to me I guess back when I was uh, in school uh, elementary school or uh, junior high or something many years ago but uh, at least I have a matching set if I ever wanted to start using them and obviously they're kind of tarnished they need to be cleaned up before they can be used but I just thought that was a little interesting um, and just to add to my collection just because of the brand name alright next um, desk pens I kinda like that desk pens and I have not inked this one up yet uh, but this is a Schaefer uh, desk pen you can it's got that typical Schaefer inlaid nib I've got one very similar to this one in all black uh, this particular one is uh, like a brownish dark burgundy and the reason that's not totally on there is because it came with a cartridge. I have not pierced that cartridge, and I have not had it to flow with ink yet, um, because I need to get out one of my little eight balls or a holder for uh, this particular pen. But so I'm gonna get it on a little bit on the threads, just not all the way down. Um, and I do use desk pens. I've got several Estherbrooks, and I've got one very much like this, in, totally in black. So, oh, well, you know, I figured, what the heck? For the, it was fairly cheap. It was not expensive whatsoever. So I figured, what the heck? And it was from a seller that I've purchased from before that I know always had uh, working pens um, at a fairly decent price. And I figured I'd just give it a shot. 
All right, one more. Uh, let's go this one. Morrison's. Um, Morrison was a manufacturer that was starting uh, in 1910 out of New York City. Uh, this one is the, well, I want to call it the Patriot model, but it's almost the Patriot. Richard B uh, Bender on uh, richardspens.com calls this the Proto-Patriot. Uh, but uh, this particular one, um, it looks like it's a black chased hard rubber. But according to Richard Bender's website, it's actually not hard rubber. Um, it is actually a black chased celluloid uh, from like the 1930s. And if that is the case, then okay, so be it. Um, that may explain, though, why that chasing held up so nice. I mean, it's not worn whatsoever. Now, yeah, granted, you can find uh, hard rubber that is nicely chased. Uh, after like 90 years but this particular one um, absolutely gorgeous chasing it's still really really good condition you got that gold band around there it's got a little bit of wear a little bit of tarnishing to it um, and you got right here on the pen you've got the Morrison's logo right there or at least the Morrison name on that clip I do like that clip um, I like the look of it because it's got that spade look at the end uh, at the top of the cap, you've got a very uh, a nice uh, bevel, or a very uh, it comes to a, a essentially a point, a nice rounded point there at the, the top, and you've got a similar thing going on at the bottom of the of the barrel, and you've got a nice little spade on that lever, which is kind of neat because you don't see um, many spaded levers, but on Morrison's. Um, you know, they've got it. Uh, Morrison uh, did the Patriot, which was meant to be uh, used quite heavily for the U.S. military. The, the thing is, um, about the, <laughs> the, the Patriot, from what I read, is it didn't meet military spec and uh, to be worn in a uniform pocket, uh, but a lot of service members still use them, uh, from what I've read. So, you open it up. And you've got a, what you would expect to see, a very nice condition section here um, with, with some threads still in excellent crisp shape. It has a number 7 steel nib to it, uh, and I'll give you a better picture of that. But one of the things that I wish this seller had been able to do, because the seller did say that it had been restored, um, however, it's got a fine nib, and you can't really see it here on the camera, but it seems to have a left oblique grind to it, um, which is, I didn't figure that out until I started to write with it, or um, even before I inked it up, just put it to paper to see how it glided, uh, would glide across the paper, and was a little scratchy. So I got out um, my jeweler's loop, looked at it, it's like, ooh, you know what, it looks like it has like a left oblique grind. Uh, so I inked it up, and sure enough, <laughs> it certainly has uh, an oblique grind where in order to get it to write smoothly, you have to kind of turn it com almost completely sideways. And I'll show you that here in just a little bit. So um, 1930s, beautiful looking pen. And like I said uh, about some of the others, fairly inexpensive. I did not pay a lot of money for this particular pen. So um, when, I, when I say a lot of money, I'm talking like 20 bucks, maybe tops. And I've got a nice vintage, beautiful example of a vintage pen uh, here in my collection. Lastly, wanted to show you one that um, I, I, I found absolutely zero about this uh, particular pen uh, or this brand. It says Caress on the clip, and I've done some research, been trying to find Caress. The seller said it said Peerless. Well, I don't know why they so it said peerless because it says caress <laughs> c-a-r-e-s-s -S. Um, one of the cool things about this in the 1930s you can really tell the uh, influence of the, the Parker Big Red um, in the Parker Dual Folds I've actually got three or four uh, pens that are the the orange color which they for some reason they called red instead of orange um, but um, you know, it, you've got the the black at the bottom, the black at the top. I do like a good flat top pen. Uh, it is slightly oversized, and the seller said that um, 
this particular pen is um, the, the cap is not original to the pen and I guess that's quite possible I wouldn't know uh, because I can find absolutely zero about this caress brand uh, on online the thing is the color matches perfectly between the cap and the barrel so if it is actually a mismatch and if it came off from a spare part then they did a pretty good job um, matching them but it is a twist cap and there is absolutely nothing on the barrel as far in terms of imprint so it doesn't tell me any information whatsoever just a plain lever here uh, so if you're talking like a third tier manufacturer um, then okay uh, understandable but I just don't know who manufactured this particular pen I don't know what brand uh, it is I don't know if Caress was supposed to be the model or the brand I'm assuming it is the brand because that would be typical on a clip it does say patent pending on it as well um, but I've got absolutely no information. I sat and I kept looking on some of the major uh, pen uh, forums and uh, websites, my go-to websites, and I've pretty much found nothing. So I'm going to keep digging uh, from time to time to see what I can come up with. Uh, but it is actually a fairly nice example, and I this was my pen of the day just yesterday. So let's go ahead and dive into some uh, some writing samples. This particular one does post, and it is fairly big and large in the hand, uh, but uh, you really don't need to post it if you don't want. And I choose I don't want. So this one, because it's been sitting out all day, took a little bit, a uh, little bit to get that started, but so this is a caress. C A R E S S. It's got a fine nib to it. Uh, it doesn't really tell me anything on the nib. Uh, nothing really of uh, of great importance on the nib, other than, um, and I'll show you a real close up of that particular nib. But um, there's really nothing there that tells me much about its manufacture or any great qualities of it. This is a very firm nib. You're not going to get a whole lot of line variation. It's actually a little smoother than I thought it was going to be for a no-name, uh, have no clue who made it kind of nib to it. Um, it's not the smoothest, but it's actually not too bad either. Uh, it's uh, looking at a an unknown steel nib, uh, fine, firm nib, it, it actually performed fairly well. Obviously, when you first pick it up and go to use it, after not having used it for just a little bit, you will get that. Yes, I've run across that. Um, but, uh, let's see. What did I put into it? I put into a Birmingham... Yes, on my scribble, because it's really early in the morning here. Birmingham Pens Allegheny Arsenal Gunpowder black it actually puts down a decent amount of ink for being a, an old fine nib on it so you know this is uh, not bad to play with and this one also was not expensive really uh, again in the uh, 20 bucks and under category um, I figured I'd give it a shot, even though the, the seller did say that it w was not a matching cap to it. Uh, granted, not a whole lot of value in it, but it is something to play with and something to add to my collection. And I was actually looking for a... That's the size of this particular pen to me is just about perfect. I absolutely love that size and that heft to this pen. So, I like it, uh, regardless of uh, its cost and regardless of the generic uh, uh, presentation of the pen. I'm all for it. I kind of like it. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, try that Morrison's that I was telling you about here earlier. It's not an overly hefty pen, uh, which uh, which is why I do believe um, the it doesn't have the heft of like a hard rubber. So it may very well be that uh, a Chase celluloid, and I'm still getting used to this one. I don't own any left oblique. I, I 
I'm not the kind of guy who has to have all kinds of fancy nib grinds, and quite honestly, none of them have really impressed me that I've played with, uh, but it's one of those I'm going to have to get used to how to use this particular pen. So you, you'll see the difference here um, in how I try to, to write with it one way versus the other. So trying to write with it normally, like I normally would hold it, a Morrison's looks very scratchy. But it does do better on, I will tell you, on this Rhodia dot pad than it did on a normal notepad that I tried writing on earlier. Uh, so a Morrison's, um, this is the... The precursor to the Patriot, or as Richard Bender calls it, the Proto Patriot. Now, what I found with playing with it earlier, and let me see, because I haven't, this is the first time writing with it on a Rhodia dot pad, turning it into this way with that grind actually makes it write nicely. So it's got a, the left oblique, uh, it's got a grind to it, and when you turn and, and you write it with the, this way, which goes with the grind, as opposed to here, it's not going with the grind. It's a lot more fine. When you flip it over and start writing with it this way, you actually get a much wetter line to it. It actually gives you can give you a much the left that way, as opposed to writing it with And you can probably hear the feedback difference between the two because I can definitely hear it and feel it. So, um, I'll show you what the left oblique grind actually looks like on paper anyway um, and how it's described. Um, and here, this particular ink, I also used the, uh, the same the Allegheny Arsenal Gunpowder Black. from Birmingham. I can tell you that I'm not going to enjoy writing with this pen. I'm not going to enjoy using it. Um, but it is kind of neat to have in my collection just because it's absolutely really pretty. I mean, I love the look of this pen. Look at this. I love the chasing on it. Look how well that chasing still shows up so it's in great condition probably from the 1930s or so I've got a nice Morrison's and Morrison's has a neat little history some um, and I'm trying to get it so I can line up there we go wanted to at least somewhat line those up just because I like it that way um, but Morrison's does have a neat history um, and some <laughs> uh, interesting stuff about uh, marketing practices where they would actually mark their retail value or their pens really really high and then sell them a whole lot lower so you think that you're getting a huge savings and they actually had some legal issues with that um, with federal trade so um, and lastly let's go ahead and show you the little bell um, little bell is one that you can post if you want and uh, but it's not going to stay very well. It's not going to stay on that cap for posting. You got to press really hard, and I don't really want to press hard on it. But it's big enough, chunky enough, um, where you really don't need it. Quite honestly, that cap is not as heavy as it looks, being metal. Um, so it doesn't back weight that pen, but it's not going to post properly anyway. So let's go ahead and check out the label. This is uh, a Vortex model. And the Mocha swirl pattern. I mean, it's got a nice acrylic to it. The IPG nib is a one of the better ones that I've run across. Um, like I, I'll post some articles about IPG nibs down below. Always check the the video description uh, for links that I may put there. Uh, for you to find other videos that I've got or some explanatory articles uh, or links to source material, that sort of thing. Um, but um, in this particular pen, I put Mont Blanc uh, Toffee Brown. 
So I figured that would be appropriate to match the mocha score, uh, swirl, mocha swirl pattern. Um, the thing about these uh, facets here, you've got one, two, three facets, and, and I, it must be just for design because it serves no useful purpose that I can tell uh, for uh, you actually to have some dremeled or, or you know, I say dremeled, but I mean um, obviously ground into the acrylic. I, I, there's, it serves no real purpose, so I just don't understand it, but uh, I, apparently it is for just design purposes. Uh, unless it's to help put a flat against the, the web of your, your hand, I don't know, but it doesn't work that way for me. Uh, but this one is an IPG fine writing nib. Even though I'm, th I think this is was supposed to be a medium. Um, it's actually a writing really on the fine side. So anyway, there you go. It's my pen mail. So I've got uh, the Labelle, Morrison's, the unknown. Look at look at the size difference in, in these here, just to give you a, a, an idea. This is kind of an oversized pen. That's very <laughs> much an oversized pen. And then you've got the desk pen. Um, and then, of course, you know, the Waterman's package that I showed you. Well, anyway, that's my pen mail. Um, it's really early in the morning here. It's before 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, for some reason, I couldn't sleep, and I've been up for several hours. So I figured, what the heck, I'll crawl out of bed, and I'll come do this. So that's my pen mail uh, for the past several days. So... Uh, just keep watching for more videos, folks. Thank you so much for subscribing. Talk to you. Bye.